but it was dope before I cut you off, I had to make an introduction. So, we were, all right, so we've been talking for like maybe half an hour. Actually, a very interesting conversation, but we'll get into it a little bit later. Anyways, we have Zoe here, the fashion icon. What's up, guys? One of the best in the Gold Coast. Probably one of the best in Chicago, too, so hit him up, too, if you want to look for a suit. But, um, you got Zoe? Yeah, what's this? What's up, guys? I'm Zoe. Full name? I'm on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Instagram. <laughs> Um, my whole name is Renzo. Renzo. So the story with that was when I was in high school, Renzo is apparently a very common Hispanic Filipino name. Mm. And there was about three of us. So it was either Ren like Renzo uh, Jr. was what my call said for 30. And I was like, I ain't getting called 30, bro. It's not, it's not happening. Uh -huh. So then I was like, just call me Zo. Uh -huh. and, and I think that just stuck through high school. So now I'll just go by Zo. And that's crazy, though, because I really thought you were Hispanic. I told him, too. When you told me you were I'm Filipino. Filipino yeah. yeah. I'm like the Hispanic of Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were that's, like, maybe you had to be like, I'm not, I'm not I'm Mexican, but like South American. Yeah, I was selling it like Filipino. Yeah. Believe it, man. Hispanic. Man, bro, listen, like my mom, it, anybody who ever sees my mom, it's, it's strange. They always think she's like Hispanic lady to them. Really? It's it's like very close. Like a lot of the stuff, like my wife's uh, maiden name was Luna the net. Mm -hmm. I told her like, bro, I grew up with like, for my Nunez is why is that though? Why do because my sister gets mistaken for Filipino and she's she's Mexican, yeah, and she but her eyes are like kind of stretched and they're like, Are you Filipino? She's like a Mexican. They for what I learned because we were both like under the Spanish, you know, and then you know, Spanish rule, right? Okay, but so the thing I learned recently was when the Spanish came to fight the bill of the, the indigenous people in the Philippines, they just came from Mexico. Uh, so what they did was, how about instead of having Spanish troops fight them, uh, let's bring a bunch of like Mexicans with us, right? Yeah, yeah. And what ended up happening was that they like intermix, but like that's why like it's it's a very common for mm -hmm. like Filipino yeah. or mixed race, like no matter what. Like our did you look at the the women's world Cup right now, the Filipinas? They're all half numpet. Yeah. And it doesn't make them less Filipino. That's just who we are as an yeah. example. Like, I'm looking at it right now, I'm you work a Filipino, and my wife's Hispanic, my kids are getting in we don't want Spanish. Right. So, so you, don't, you guys don't know Spanish, right? No, I'm assuming. Well, there's there's parts of the Philippines that do, but uh, we have yeah. Tagalog, which is our main language. It's similar to For Spanish. For the yeah. I, I understand a little bit of Spanish, uh, enough to, like, know when somebody's talking bad yeah. about him. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the basics. Yeah, but for the most part, I mean, like, we're English-speaking country, so the yeah. funniest part when I first moved to the U.S., back to the U.S. was, man, how is your English so good? And I'm like, because I've been speaking English all my life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, maybe not as refined as, like, now with, you know, I still have an accent, maybe, but, it, or like, there, it's, it's normal. Like, everywhere you go to the Philippines, you say something in English, everybody's like, I am English. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so what, um, what's it called? You said you moved to Brad Knight's in your soul. So, what's the difference between the Philippines and then moving over here to the United States? And what made you two actually, before that, what made you come over here and yeah. decide? Yeah, so that part, it's, I don't, I don't look at it like, I, I, I expand on it. It wasn't a sub story for, for me. Uh, I don't look at it that way, but my parents had split up. My mom was already here in the States. My dad was um, a higher up at a very prestigious company. So, we weren't, like, doing bad at the Philippines. Um, uh, we were here and doing okay. Mm -hmm. and they split up. I moved here with my mom. I wouldn't say by force, but it was for me. It was almost like getting kicked. Yeah, like, sort of is how I felt at the time. Right. But I also looked at it like a blessing. So when I moved back here, my whole intention was, man, I'm just gonna join the military. So I was like training nonstop for because that was the that was the story that was sold to me by I I was yeah. Cause, you know, you'll join the military, it's okay. Like, I was so ready during the Air Force Salts. It's crazy. Like, I came here and my aunt, who I was living with for a few months, looked at me and was like, I went to my bed. They have to where does the water happen? And then I was like, I don't know, but like, I'm so ready, amped, and, you know, things don't work the way oh, they should. Uh, uh, filed my paperwork and be the lawyer. Our lawyer just randomly, like, passed away. Oh, damn. So, like, I missed the window and then. I remember like sitting in my uh, my aunt's apartment, and my dad was throwing off of my mom. Okay. Because my mom, I know, I had told her like what happened. She yeah. told the company like he's seeing somebody like company this kind of thing. And I remember just being so mad like you did all of this to her. I mean, you're telling her to apologize to you. Yeah. No one. So uh, that had not that when he filed for you know, they filed for I don't because we weren't allowed to divide the purpose. Right at that point. Yeah. You know, there were like threats here and there, like if you guys ever said foot, I don't think that's the case. I'm like, 
Well, wait, so you couldn't file a divorce in the Philippines? We couldn't file a for, uh, we couldn't go back to the Philippines. Okay. But, sir, okay. yeah, at the time, it's because legally we didn't have a place to, but we also we were under threat because he's still in a relationship with a girl, I think, to this day. Right, right. And because my mom did, or somebody in Mark came to the club, called him out about that, right? They were threats. They were like, if you ever come back to your, like, we're going to get positive notes. Right, 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 right. And like, I don't know if that's still the case. It's like, personally, like, I that's long done, but, you know, we have a reason so to file for, like, protection from the U.S. because we really didn't really know where to go. Right. You know, my mom was a nurse and has been working here, but, you know, my aunt at some point was like, he's just send him home. And my mom was like, so what? Like, send him on the later. Right. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have a family. Uh, you know, so... Now, that's what happened at 19, like, out. but I didn't look at it, I didn't look at it bad. I think a lot of the stuff that happened in my life, I just look at it like, I'm just going to move forward. Uh, yeah. You know, like, I used to be, I used to get bullied when I was just a kid. Okay. And I think at a certain point in time, like, I found sports, I found people who cared about me to develop. How the lead in this is, just learn to be like, it's like Ted Russo, he's at like, a goldfish, just forget about it. God, like, and I think that's the mindset I had was just, and you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that happening that's happening right now, but I'm just gonna forget it. At least, yeah. yeah. Just let's just move forward. There's no point in looking looking back. Bad. Bad. So, you know, it, it was tough at first, and, and yeah. it was. I remember specifically still the moment that like I haven't seen my mom probably like a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. And she just texted me. I just got off the bus that we were leaving in Lincoln, where it's saying, and I saw my mom from two blocks away. And I remember my mom just dropped her bag, so I just started crying. And I ran straight to my mom because I was like, I just tell her, like, it's going to be okay. Well, we're going to make it whatever it is. Right. right. And then just to see this, like, five court woman crying, like, blowing her eyes out. Like, she's like, you have no idea, like, how bad it is. Yeah. Like, how bad I feel. And I was like, come on, it will be fine. Right. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to move on from that to where we are at, like, now as a family, is like, it's, I don't know, it's like a, it's a testament to like the hard work Filipinos put it. Yeah, you know, so, it's crazy too because like, how was the relationship with your father then? What would you say? For me? Yeah. Because it, it sounds rough, that's the thing. Hard. You know, I did. Looking back, I, I see right now, look at the 26, and the intention that my dad had of like how he raised us, how he was raised is very traditional. And I don't know, even there were certain facets of what happened with his life. All those. Like, the times he would fight with my mom, or he gets home from work stressed out, and we're like, maybe we were like pissing him off too much. Yeah. Or just simple things like you come home and like your family just kind of looks at you like, hey, like there's one much safe. Right. I start to realize at like 26 after like working all these years that like, man, as a guy, like you need a support system. And I told my mom like, you were not a bad family. You were, no. you were definitely like trying your best too, but you know, under I can also see now like where we were lacking from. Right? Yeah. And, and they, they certainly don't blame him anymore, but like it was rough growing up because I feel like yeah. a lot of my dad's love language was more like gift giving or like for the one that he was, a, you know, like he was a put that up lost to a lot of people. And I think he was so used to the I'm a, I'm all reward you, but then I'm gonna need you to like I'm exactly what I'm telling you to do. Yeah, you can't do that with kids to stay right or as we are. It, it, for me personally, I really got a lot of my childhood because I remember like I had a regardless one of my birthdays, he buys me a pair of shoes. He's like, hey, have a great, I was really out, right? And I had to, I had a game that same number. And I was like, hey, can I take out guards or drive to the game? And then for some reason, he just goes, I'm gonna need to know that you can change tires. I'm like, we well, yeah, for sure. I just, I'm running late to my game. And he's like, well, so I buy you shoes and now you can't do what I tell you to do? Right. And it was like that kind of like, since we're toxic relationship right. at that point in time but like you said I also now we kind of understood where he was coming from too but I didn't know what we were in but yeah. I start to understand why it drives people like like that and that's, and that's exactly you're kind of describing my dad and it's crazy because you're like you're Filipino and every time we like talk to people that immigrated over here it's the same exact story because my dad was strict as your dad right and but I didn't get why as a kid too like he would reward us and he didn't expect nothing bad, but he did have to do it like the way he wanted it. Yeah. Right. And then uh, I feel like that kind of pushed me away. But as soon as I started growing up and how the world, and I don't want to say the world was cruel, but you see how people don't really give a fuck. They don't. And they don't care how you feel. So like the way he was preparing us, I don't put that blame. And that's really crazy when you keep saying that you were just like, that's why I asked, what was your list with your dad? Because like me and my dad, we were, 
not so close from like 18 to 21. No doubt. Right? Because I feel like I just had some anger towards him based off that. But the more I started growing up, the more I started growing up in the world, it's exactly that. I don't blame them. You're, it's because, like, as a guy, like, and I tell you right now, like, my sister probably definitely has a different experience from uh, that. But as a guy, like, now, and, like, back, like, I start to see, like, I start to understand that I want my dad here to me. Yeah. Like, it's just hard sometimes because, like, as a guy, like you said, it's like you're being trained for war, basically. It's your yeah. feels. And at the time, you're, like, thinking about, man, I really hate this. Yeah. Right. And then now you look back like he was probably doing it for reason. Granted, not all the stuff that he did was from yeah. like something really like that. To but be you love it. Like yeah. you, you, like you look at it. There's self love. Like yeah. yeah. I went to university in the Philippines when I was there, and I was like, hey, can I get in the university? It was like an hour to you that yeah, they wouldn't let me do it. Right. So like, can I stay there because I don't want to fail fast this whole while? I want to more to do well. And they were like, no, you're gonna. I have made all every day here in Seattle. It's uh-huh. like moving here in Skokie to like down Dutch California. Yeah, yeah. Except more track. Then, right. And I was like, yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah, do I learned how to do it. My first semester, I, mean, I got it to the sports science program of UST, which is one of the best medical school in the Philippines. Right. And there's like millions of applicants every year, and they only select 50 people. I got into that service, and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do well, like, I'm gonna do my best, right? And I'm the time I never understood why they acted like they did, but I'm not. Yeah. Where I was asking for certain things. But also, I lived with myself, like, I was so focused into sports, I was like, oh, it'd be an app. I'm gonna do this, yeah. I'm gonna make it work. And you scan out know, the dropout later, what a class was like, I think you start with 50, and I think like eight people graduate at the end of the four Yeah. Then we're a medical student now. That was that was how competitive, yeah. That yeah. Was, that's how competitive it was. My first semester, where I fell out after the social fold. And, and you know, at the time, like, my mom was the only one who kind of understood. Um, like, there was a little bit of like, you should have studied harder and focused on school. But like, looking back, we've had this conversation where she was like, I can try to you change it now. Right? We could have done better. Hmm. Yeah. And they learned the lesson for me. And my sister went to nursing school the same school. Right. Had I ever had it how they like, all oh, her door mocks it and she was like a hero. And I don't take that against her because my parents oh, learned the lesson that they had been. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's the price you pay as a firstborn, I guess, is like, right. yeah. you're the guinea pig. <laughs> and I think, you know what? I, I think, like, looking back, it was for the best because everything they have right now after that led us to, to here. Like, yeah. It, yeah. I, I think if I stayed the four years, I definitely would not have been the same person I was. So, so that's crazy because like all right so you pick your high senior so this stuff you got a couple jobs did a couple school studied a workout then you got into fashion how did you get into fashion into the same business yeah so this part like i don't know like four different now like, i remember like there's one movie that got me about the fashion thing oh it was really weird it's uh, a lot the crazy stupid line ah uh, that will be with during yeah, 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 yeah. i was like so obsessed with it what around that scene where he's like take off your new balances throws up yeah, this why Gosling just transforms Steve Carell like it here. And I real I was kinda like looking at that in the conversation they had with like you need to rediscover your mail or uh-huh. like maybe at the time just like everybody who works out their their intentions was like, I wanna be cool, like I don't want people to, to like I want to know yeah. girls to it, it started <laughs> with that. Correct. But I think where it really like got honed in was when I was in university seeing my my coach every day, like uh-huh. walk him all suited Oh, full suit and tie or something. Yeah. Um, my coach Patrick was like German, and I think that's something that like he instilled in us was like, you have to look at where is it look good, feel good, man. Like he wants to be treated like a professional. He's gonna dress like one. He's gonna act like one. Like mm. and to this day, like I still talk to him. Like con oh, man, it's still the personality, right? Well, but I think that was the catalyst for that. It got me into like that. I had this like really high intuitive, and I, there was a period after. I left Robert Morris um, that doesn't exist. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a period that I was like, man, I need a job because I had nothing nah. to do. And all I knew at the time was yeah. coaching kids soccer. No one felt soccer pot. Yeah. Um, so my my wife or my girlfriend at the time was working in 900 shops. She was a concierge. She was like, you should like work at like a J. Guru or something. And then I was there for like three months. So we was, uh, and then this dude walks in and he's like, hey, you know, you flirt. The only one here always ever wears a suit. He's like, I work for Indochino. He said, it's not ah, yes. So I take his car and the jerk. I stopped by the store and, you know, that was kind of it. Like, I got into like custom suiting. And I remember my interview, the uh, 
the store manager was like, you're like my wild card. Like, I know nothing about you, uh, but I'm going to take the risk. Right. That was funny because like in my interview, oh my, I went up full, full suited. Uh, I was sitting outside of like the outer of like the back room. Uh, and the regional manager at the time was there, walked up right past me into the back room. And, and then the manager was like, okay, she's ready to see you. So when I went in the back, so I was like, hey, what the shit? I thought you worked here. Long to be true. Was like, what do you mean? He was like, or me, like, the better drive with the dress than how I said. Ah, uh, I I'm like, oh, I didn't just. And I told her, like, the line of my coach showed me, like, dressing well as a form of good man person. Right, right. You know, I want I want the job. I want to be respected. That I want to be treated with respect like eight people. And she was like, oh, that. I really right. like that. And she's like, cool, when can you start? And that was the spring, what's it? So that's, I don't know, man. I find that, I find that crazy because, like, you started from playing soccer and you thought you were so determined you're going to be an athlete. Yet on top of that, you went to school, med school, not just a regular degree. And then you moved from the, from the Philippines to the United States. It's just so crazy how it just led you to where you are now, right? It's like, it's that's crazy. Me. You know, yeah. like, well, and you don't know where life's going to take you. That's yeah. No, you really don't. No. And I told them, like, at, at some point, like, we kind of touched on this in the previous conversation, but the day, that the whole thing that happened to me, I think, uh -huh. is what really led me to believe there's somebody watching out for me out there. Yeah. So this is the part I missed, right? Yeah. When I was getting, the way I got recruited is so strange. Uh -huh. So what happened was I, uh, I was looking for a job before going to school. Uh -huh. I was like, you know, the only thing I know to do is coach kids out. Uh -huh. So I see this academy on uh, Facebook. Beautiful. There's a really small academy at the time, but I was, I hit up the coach and I was like, hey, you're looking for coaches. Yeah. And he's like, hey, why don't you stop by the gym? Let's, let's, let's start. Uh -huh. So I remember he was like, and I was hanging out with him for like a week. And he's like, I think you, you have it in him. Uh -huh. I think you need to take like your coaching license. Um, so that you can keep coaching games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, for sure. And at that point, like, I, the, the only job I had in the U.S. at the time was I worked for maybe, like, three months at a warehouse. Uh, like, the Filipino, like, importing Filipino products and that kind of stuff, getting paid, like, $9. Or Do you think you were good enough to go pro or not? You know, I didn't ask you that yet. It's yeah. tough. This is, this is kind of in that conversation. So, yeah. but what happened was I went to my, uh, I went to get my license. Okay. And we did. it's like a weekend thing. And what you, you do as like the, I think it's like the F license for US soccer is like, or, so we're gonna make you yeah. try running a drill. All right. Like just to see if you can come. Um, and I remember I was in a group of six and it was somebody else, another coach who was like doing the drill. So it was like a mini game and we were a bunch of adults. I'm like, this is fun. So he throws the ball up in the air. Oh, the goalie throws the ball up in the air. And I remember when my out was so great. I touched the ball all the way down. Like perfect. No work. Uh, this coach like stops you work all pulling me out. He's like, Hey, I have a question. What are you what are you doing right now? Like what do you mean? He's like, like you going to school? Are you playing anywhere? Like it's like, no. He's like, why not? I was like, I didn't talk to him. Like he's in the Philippines and quite I told him, like, quite frankly, I don't think I'm good enough to compete with kids who grew up just because I'm I haven't had that experience to, to do that. I don't want to hate how good people were. Right. Yeah. And he was like, Okay. I'm going to text my buddy, um, you're going to try out for his team, okay? So he texts, I'm going to speak Maryland, and he's like, I want you to, like, you go try out for the team. Mm. Like, okay. With him. So I remember, I live in Skokie, commuted all the way to Arlington Heights on a different weekend. Go on. And in my head, I'm just like, I'm probably not as good as these American kids in LA. Ah. Screw it, I'll give it a mm. jump, right? So I go to the tryout. First thing I see it was one of my good French legs. This six foot one German dude walking in was like, Hey, what's up, man? I'm like, I'm like, screwed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I gotta go. I'm not sitting out solidly. Correct. So we do the tryout, you know, like I'm just, I was there. I, all I told myself that day was, I'm just gonna have as much fun as I can. Uh, I'm just gonna run my harder. Just screw it. Like, what do you have to lose? Like, yeah. Right? You know, coach pulls me out, like maybe start the second half. He's like, man, I like what I see, you know, like we'll get him done. Uh, uh, it then tricks Jurgen, so he's like, all serious. Thank you for coming, man. We'll keep in contact. We'll let you know. I went home that day and I told my mom, my mom was like, how'd I go? Yeah. It's like, probably bad. That was like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not good enough, I guess. Yeah, but man, I'm going to shoot this to guys on the podcast. Because <laughs> this is something that still in my forever. The car. After all these years, I still have the text message that he, he had from all those years. Yeah. Oh. Offering me a scholarship. Yeah. When year was this? Probably what? What? 2019? 2027? April 9th, 2017. 2017. He says, this is Coach Patrick from Robert Morris. Uh, for your email, Merrick told me so much about you. I want to offer you a scholarship. Neither. Full ride. Yeah. Not a full ride. 
Okay. But it was enough that like we could, I could afford to go to college is right right and i remember i read that and i first reaction was so weird i just started laughing and and, and i just remember my phone dropped from my hand and i started crying and it was like because i was like man dude like like life changed this overnight and and then i just remember like my mom was like what happened what? God, I told her, and then she, she was still the same way. She started laughing, and I was just started grunting. Right. And she was like, yeah, we'll, we'll learn from uh, when I got here to that point, I had no idea what I was going to do in that out. And then when that happened, I was like, this is something. Right. Yeah. But I started to believe may, maybe God wants me here to play yeah. something. What position did you play? So I, I played center. I so, yeah. was a goalkeeper. Also, oh, so you were you loved to run then, huh? I, as a goalkeeper going up, we need to. Uh, I start playing center mid, like mid in college, a whole day. And then when I tried out Robert Morris, they said that clearly. And has to can't be brave. Yeah, right back. It was, it was the most painful. I just picked it up and it is just a lot of work. Right. Yeah. But I accepted it. I was like, you know what? I want to be part of the team. Like, what man? Right. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so how long did he keep that up, like playing soccer? For I, I probably played for Robert Morris for about a full half a season. I'm just half a season. You know, okay. I stopped because at midway through the uh, midway through kind of that year, I realized like it was expensive to do a stole. And like for somebody who did it, who didn't have a job, yeah, who didn't have like experience to do stuff, right? It's like, man, I need to find a scholarship. So I, I made this joke like back then. I was like, I was the only three sport athlete. Played soccer. Uh, <laughs> I did esports because I went to the esports together at Morris and was like, "Hey, you guys have a spot?" They're like, "Yeah, we'll give you scholarship money. So it'll be fine." And then I started to compete. Okay. And I think like after running track and field, it was a tough conversation because I remember sitting up like at a like a Mexican restaurant with uh, Patrick and Patty, the other coach, who's now the coach of Roosevelt. But I remember Patrick stood up from the table and I told Patty like, "Bro, I, I gotta talk to Patrick. I think I'm gonna have to quit the team." Uh, and he's like, "Why?" And I was like, yeah, well, because I they think they're going to give me a bigger scholarship if I just run. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was tough because I was like, I don't really, was an adult mode. That's not bike in the Because I really love playing soccer. This is a hard work decision right now. Yeah. Uh, and I just remember, like, Fat Fatty was like, well, just think about it, like, suit. Like, you don't have to make the decision right now. But if I told him, like, I have to, because, like, I have to sign that paper yeah. for the next semester. And I remember when Andrew sat down, I just felt a sense of calm, like, this is the right choice, I think. Mm. So you chose to be a runner left. So I chose to be a runner. Oh. Dude, that's so crazy. I was not... I mean, they're going to offer you more money. You might as well take it. Yeah, they yeah I wasn't more great. Money. Yeah, <laughs> I was decent enough to run in college a little bit. Well, yeah. But I did. And I, I just never looked back. Uh, like, I never I never looked back. And I told them, like, I miss playing soccer. And I, I still do to this day. And I felt like that was... And that was, like, a mere people. I think it made up because, like, it told you a while ago. That's how I've been my life. Yeah. So, hey, insane. It's crazy. That is crazy too. But uh, also, just speaking on Sark, you know how hard it is too, just to make it here in, the, in America. Like the amount of people that come from Europe to play for the MLS, they always say it's the worst. I, I can't even find the right words, but it's like so messed up because you have to have money and corrupted to be these academies. And like, it's all connections. So like, if your team sucks and or average. And he has 10k to pay for the academy. You know, just accept him under the kid that has no, no money, whatever. Same thing in Mexico too. My grandpa, back in like in the 70s, he was a uh, practical clean in the second yeah. of, second league, but he had no money. You know, so they'd rather ch choose him, put him over the side, and choose the guy with more money to use that slot. Yeah. You know, same thing with America too. It's like there's no talent. And I think like, it's, because in the Philippines it's like that too. When you're in, man. Yeah. Like, for the time that I was there going up, there wasn't Al's water, dude. Uh, but not with the rise of, like, these after, you know, European guys were there starting at that ways. Everything's about money. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it also just shows you how far behind a lot of countries are in sport. That's all right. And yeah. ego. So, like, the U.S. team, bro. Like, yeah. do you see the Go Cup? <laughs> you know how bad the, like, you saw how bad we played? But like, the he, United States? You know, like, I got a support a little bit, but... Yeah. It's now sent is like somebody was like, it doesn't matter. That's the C team. You're never going to see those guys in the World Cup. Yeah. But that's not the point. Like, they're going to get a play that a C team and it would still have crossed. Like, dude, it's crossed everyone. That's yeah. And five so, of those players are playing in the top, like in the top league. Did you miss? Yeah. Come on. Wait. It's crazy. And you know, like, here are the nine for my experience being a coach. Like, oh. there's academies out there who, who prioritize. Like, yeah. This is so weird. So I found this out, right? But 
there's Chicago Fire Academy, yep. you know, which you play to play. Yeah, yeah. There's the guys who are Chicago Fire Academy. Uh huh. Who like track this and tear it apart. We have never heard of. You will never see like in the fire picture anything like this. Mm. The core the Reef Town. Yeah. And it's like these guys you will never heard of. I read that MLS, the actual like, I didn't know. Uh -huh. And they're the parents who are like, my son's paying for the fire. It's like, right. I need to break through you. Got it. Got rid of it. Well, yeah. Sucks up. Dude, I, I love soccer to death. Yeah. Right? Like, Lionel Messi is the best player of all time. I don't care who says any of this. Messi, <laughs> yeah, he's a Ronaldo fan, but Messi's the best ball. Uh, I'm going to just. <laughs> no, don't tell me you're a Ronaldo fan. Uh, Ronaldo fan? <laughs> you know, I have to appreciate both of them. So, no, yeah, they're both the two. Ronaldo, I didn't like him so many the last three years just because I know how hard he worked. That's yeah. a machine. That's definitely how Borgata. Yeah, yeah, Messi? Yeah, Messi's town. I, I got to back you up. Messi yeah. is the most, probably the most talented player you yeah. have ever seen. Never seen. Yeah. For Ronaldo, I think, is the the, the player who, like, recalled his break at the top. Yeah, like, he would just, he's the definition Machine. of, like, yeah. I believe I can't in a hug. Yep. Yeah. Now, I think that's really long. why, that's really why I can't yeah. look at him. Take one or four, there are three, is that eight? I'm a Man United boy, so to say, I'm not in that house. But, well, listen, but Ronaldo wasn't even my favorite Man United player. I'm seeing a yeah. oh, 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 yeah. You know, like, it was Paul Scholes, and I'm not going to say that because every midfielder said mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Way, like, it was him because when I was growing up, it was fun to see somebody who was taller than I was. Oh. It was like, yeah. it was taller, right? Yeah. Never gets hit, never loses the ball. Yeah. Like, even the great players were like, how the hell did a guy tend yeah. the ball? Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. And like me, like when I moved here, that's what I learned, like playing soccer was like, you don't want to get hit, just pass the ball. Yeah, pass, pass the, the ball. ball. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But what do you think about your thoughts on Messi coming to Inter Miami? I think like it's it's a smart mode for him because I mean like David I was just watching a while ago right but David Beckham's contract was at like six million at the time but he had an option to buy an MLS team and he was making profit through every MLS team at the time. Mm -hmm. He made so it's like two hundred mil. I he, think he made over two hundred million mm -hmm. and, and people look at it like he was getting paid six. I was like yeah but David Beckham had a vision and built an empire. Yeah. And now like, now he is Inter Miami. Yeah. And at the time like. When Inter, when it was, I think, like you were trying to buy an MLS team, it was only worth like so much. It was so now like twenty three hundred. It was twenty five. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like buying it for twenty five million. Now it's like three hundred million to purchase an MLS team. Yeah. So, and his team was worth eight hundred million. Yeah, like the valuation went up so quick. Yeah. And like so you look at it, like Messi right now, like let's just be real, but like he, I think like they'll give him a challenge playing the MLS because American soccer is very different. Yeah. It's very physical. Yeah. It's very. It's exhaust like it, it, it's a very competitive sport, right? But, it is, yeah. But I think like he's he's here because he's a smarter, he's a businessman. Yeah. Well, at this point in his life, right now, thirty six years old. Both of them. I mean, like, yeah. they're all his contracting. That either Gigalo said that himself. Mm -hmm. He was like, let's just be real. Nobody comes to Saudi to like promote the league. Yeah. yeah. Right. You come here because they're paying you like millions of dollars, regardless of what they're gonna do. With them. Or regardless of what he's gonna do the MLS or what not is gonna do. End of the day, they're gonna get their paycheck. And what do they have to? They don't have nothing. nothing. Exactly. Nothing. nothing. So I, I feel like it's a smart move from both. But yeah. Messi already he's dude, he's gonna be EY thing all the two years. I mean, yeah, he's gonna be EY's record this season. I'm sure of it. Maybe. I mean like it's what, nineteen twelve nineteen goals? Yeah, I think you guys EY had twenty nine as all time. Messi has three goals. So yeah, I think Messi's gonna I think Messi's going to score like forty goals this season. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I come to we hope soccer, I'm the last playing in the United States. It's a lot easier. I feel like, but that's why I have good like, and he's like the best. So well, it's, it's like, easy just because Inter Miami's building an empire right now. Well, no, but yeah. there's a thing too. You have to remember if it was like a one man, if it was like a one man Messi team, uh, I think it'd be very dumb. But the fact that you got like yeah. Busquets, there was, Jordi Alba, yeah, yeah. under like, <laughs> like who's the Jordi Alba. Jordi Alba, you got the guy who from uh, Atlanta United that's playing with him, Joseph Martinez, I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then now you have, there's talks of like Luis Suarez coming in. He, he, like, can't he do it. Esta, I think, just yeah. got signed. He, like, yeah. yeah. Suarez can't do it this season, not. But, but you nice. know, you know what I realized? It doesn't matter like how good the players are. Like PSG, they were they had a stacked team. And they were not that well. No, man. Like, they, they I think it's also, them. it just also comes down to good coaching, though. Cause that, yeah, it's coaching, though. And again, I'm the league one, it's not that easy. Not that it easy. Is, it's not that easy. But I think, like, coming to the MLS, you're pretty I new. think this is a, this is kind of fun to say, but I think, like, part of, like, watching game film, too, is, like, you compared these teams and the tactics and stuff. Yeah. He's just, like, PSG's whole team was built around, like, 
three players. Yeah. Neymar, it's either yeah. give the ball to yeah. Neymar, give the ball to Mbappe, or give the ball to Messi. Yeah. And in the mind, Eagles plays a big part of it too. It Everyone wants to score. Mbappe yeah. is very ambitious and young. He turned down a one billion contract. Yeah. No, but I also think like part of the thing that went sour for them was like the fans. I mean, like at some point, the fans turned on Messi too and were like, "You didn't play the Champions League." Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, he's only been here for like three yeah. seasons. Two three seasons. Yeah. Two seasons. Yeah. Right. It's like, but that's what it does to you. I think that's that's like the thing where it's like if you're not at the right environment, you can't grow. You like, can't. Messi probably didn't feel like he could do much when he was a team. Phenomenal, bro. It's yeah. Bad. Like I saw the whole game. To Sergio Busquets in the middle, bro. Everything and end of coach. What's his name? Tata. Tata Martino is there. Yeah. yeah. There's so much chemistry that as I feel like they're gonna win the cup. I would hope so. I mean, like let's just be real. The when he came in, they were last in the league, and now they're like king. They're two and zero. Oh. Technically, nah. I mean, like, there are two games winning. So, um, and then you have Jordi Alba in the back. It's crazy. It's they're totally killing. <laughs> it's all Barcelona. But if Iniesta does come in, there's no point. There's no question asked. They're gonna be another there's one. No point. Yeah, it's like they're old, but you can't just tack. That's all midfield. And I think yeah. like to the rest of the MLS, I think that's why you you guys have to give them a challenge because if that team wins any in one season, oh. in one season, guys, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> keep in mind, LA Galaxy or LA is the only ones that come on top. Always do, because they have the top players, right? They do. Yeah, but yeah. Inter Miami, coming with that, that brings in other people. Who's the guy that wants to come? Pedri. I think oh, I'm a pro. Yeah. That's it, right? He wants to come to the MLS after his contract with Barcelona. Yeah. That's crazy. It, it's yeah. crazy, but I think there's potential in US soccer. But like we said, I think a lot of it is down to, to like prioritizing talent versus like money. So in Europe, what they do instead of um, charging them for money, they spend so much money on their players because they know that later on in the future they yeah, are gonna bring it on. I think like to your point, if everything, if sports were like that, it'd be so much better. Yeah, yeah. Because I watched another video on basketball, right? But mm. somebody was saying why, like, uh, why Europeans are the future of the NBA? Because they were like, you look at Luca, but he was playing with grown men yeah. who were probably telling him even he was a good player like huh, kid you're not gonna you're just not yeah gonna yeah you trained him you're you're hardening the kid and when he moves to the u.s all he wants to do is win mm -hmm. versus like other players you yeah. get put in a spotlight of like 13 it was like that kid's gonna be a start yeah and then when they get it it's like i don't have to do anything i'm they yeah. you know, I, mean, I was yeah. gonna be a yeah a star and then it just yeah. doesn't compare like look at the top three I'm not a basketball guy, but like, look, if you look at the top three players, right? Giannis, Luca, and, um, what's his, uh, what's his name? No, no, the, uh, the guy from the Nuggets. Oh, Drew. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Jokic. 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 Yeah, Jokic. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at the three, the, all three of them are European. European. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the most, okay, so I want to say most of it's just social media. Pretty, like, just poisoning the young generation, right? Or I don't know if I'm sounding but, uh, cool, kind of, I don't know, but. It's just, a, it's social media, bro. It's like... But what do you mean by more? Like, so it's like, dude, like, you're 22, 21, right? Like you just said, at 13 years old, you're getting hyped up. Social media's already there, right? So you're already yeah. all over the place. If it's not insecurities, you get cocky. With it. And if you get cocky with it, get comfortable with it, you won't perform. You just yeah. shake the bag and that's it. All right, well, I think, like, to your point, Reg, but there's two things that happen because I think this generation, especially, like, they attach, like, their own image to what other people tell them it is mm -hmm. and i think it yeah. applies to all of us yeah right it's like oh he's a great player are you a great player because you were told that or are you a great player because you actually offer to his performance do you believe it because you be and like mindset's a huge thing yeah. but like wow well, i think that's the, the thing that people people are facing like that they the clout a little bit too much yeah. instead of doing the actual work like i have a friend i sat down with last week was a very good peer friend of mine right and we were talking about that as guys. He's like, I told him like, why aren't you chasing your your girl yet? And he's like, because I want the status for them. Like I want to show, I want to be buff. I want to be like this. I want to, you know, before I grab her. Yeah. I was like, well, what are you doing in in your life that gives you status? Yeah. It's like I drive the nice car. I drive. No, 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 no. Cool. That's not what it has. Uh. What are you doing that gives you status? Mm. And then he signed down and he thought about it. He's like, I don't understand the question. I said like, cause. If you're somebody who helps other people uh -huh. develop their talents, like as a coach, right. if you are somebody who develops people's talents, you automatically get status. Because you don't, it's like a, it's like the cheetah analogy, right? Uh -huh. The cheetah doesn't have to, or the lion analogy is like, you don't have to prove you're a lion. You look at the lion, you're like, damn, that's a 
I told him that. Yeah. Brother did something pretending to be. But I uh, told him, if you want to be a guy that was valuable, uh, do things that made you valuable. Don't chase the stats. Artificial, yes, Just, If you want to help people get better, people would naturally be like, hey, you know what? You would help me get fit. Yeah. You're the, be you're the best trainer ever. Even if one person thinks that, it puts you at a certain level because one person thinks you helped them out. Yeah. He might refer you to his friends. They get results. You don't have to, like, promote yourself as I'm the best trainer out there. Like, a lot of the social media guys are because I'm just going to be honest, man. But, like, somebody told... I had a friend who was experimenting with this, right? Go to ChatGPT, ask it for a 12-week workout. Yep. You're already a built dude, right? Mm -hmm. I made guys, I made this, like, workout plan. 12 weeks, get ready to... You posted. You didn't. You didn't learn anything. You didn't develop why well, you should be doing these exercises. Uh -huh. You asked an AI and did, did that yeah. for you. Yeah. But because people are so focused on social media and what they see, they're like, "Man, that guy is like super successful. He's big and like, I'm gonna buy his program." Yeah. If you build a program, great. But how do you? Yeah. We know that. Versus yeah. a guy you see who's like in the gym 24/7, doing his thing. You're like, "Hey, man, you want to help me out? For sure. You know, I'm a personal trainer. I'll help you out." Right. It's like social proof. Yeah. It's like actual social proof. I think there's a difference between that sort of like word of mouth that you see in person versus uh -huh. what you see in social media. All these guys who like, it's, it's, yeah. again, people are chasing the lifestyle. They're not trying to change the world and it's kind of weird. And that's what I like to, what you brought up too, because um, when you see a bit of money, like you just said, especially at a young age, you choose to get artificial, right? Like, you don't buy the Ferrari, like I heard. You don't buy the Ferrari because it goes fast. You buy the Ferrari because you know someone else can have. Yeah. It's just that, and it's messed up. And uh, I don't know, man. And, and it's crazy, too, like you just said, like, chat, TBT, it's a shortcut. So, like, what I like about life or just how it is, like, a clout chasing, right? If someone gets famous because of a clout or because of a clip, mm -hmm. eventually, even if they do get rich off of that or ask that question, how'd you do it, they won't have a response, right? Yep. So then again, you'll, even if they're living a lie, you're going to ask that right away. Like, you didn't do anything to get here. You yeah, because be what it is, for, I, I think, like, it, it applies to a lot of things, Brick. So, like, and there's really, like, power in if you want something and you work all your life to get it. Uh -huh. Once you finally have it, you appreciate it. Yep. And I think because a lot of things right now are very synthetic, it's, like, it's a culture where it's, like, so instant. Like, you know what's crazy? You, you look at the algorithm of why, like, they choose reels that are 10, 10 seconds. Mm. We had this whole social media talk for, for my job to explain it, but... Why do you have a real 10 seconds? Because the average attention span right now is like yeah, a second. Fun. Yeah. If, if it's not 10 seconds, it's longer than that. People are like, yeah, it's well, like, like, yeah. less than three seconds to decide. Yeah. And people don't realize that like you're getting programmed in every which direction that like you, you can't even appreciate things if it doesn't come like yep. yeah. way fascinating. Well, like how Steve 773 told me back in uh, the Go Host Market when yep. Al came, he just said, I forgot what El Quamil is, but he had like 50 or he has like overall son. They yep. always bash, right? But uh, when he started questioning him, how'd you get this position? Like, he had to go through hell. A lot of stuff. Hell. So if you ask him something about social media, he'll give you an answer, right? Regardless if you like him or not. Yeah. So he didn't just climb the ladder for cloud chasing or whatever. Because yeah. if you ask him, do me a content right now, give me an idea, he has it for you. Regardless if he's a degenerate, right? A lot of people feel like they get it so quick or get the fame so quick. You ask him to do something, they don't know how to do it. And that's how they fall. They, they hit a quick decline. Yes, I, I think like... I'm gonna quote this kind of like yeah, the quote I took to heart growing up, right? It's uh, like, it's just there's well, this whole culture of guys want to be a gentleman, for example. Yeah. So, like, did you know, like, the term gentleman isn't something you can call yourself? That term is actually something, it's like knighthood, right? You can't call yourself a knight, that has to be given to you. Wow. So, I was telling this to my friend the other day, but if you want to be a gentleman, treat people in such a way that they're forced to call you a gentleman. Yeah. Because if you're calling yourself that, that's an insult, that's your, you're insulting you're Yeah. Because it, that title is given to you by other people. Uh, but that's why, like, the when guys are like, man, I'm a gentleman because I opened the door. It's like, yeah, but the rest of your life doesn't show that you are, though. Yeah. No. And it's, but again, it goes to show you that, like, you want to be a man of substance, right? And, like, you want to be able to prove why you are the man that you, you, you are. Portray yourself, yeah. You portray yourself to be. And if you're not, then it falls apart, man. Because, like, it's, all the, it's not just women who see through that. Yeah. A lot of people will see through what you're trying to portray and then yeah. just be like are you really yeah that person or and the, uh, and because like be, a lot of people have are are, are insecure uh -huh. the moment they get questioned it's like well what do you what do you what do you mean yeah, it's like yeah. versus the guys like it's funny like i was talking to mr crown about this right when i, I met him at suit supply right 
but a lot of his videos you show like the rich versus the really rich kind of mindset just that mindset of like i don't have to prove anything because i know who i am right and a lot of people when you question them are you really who you say what do you mean bro like are you it's questioning me? it's yeah. like you shouldn't get a you you shouldn't be get yeah. offended if you are what you're truly about because yeah. you're like somebody tells you like I, I don't know man like that thing you posted it looked fake I'm like, uh, okay. yeah. right and that's what i like about the podcast too because like when we have like the boy podcast i like i express myself to like what i had to go through too because like i feel like if it's going to come out regardless or something like that i'd rather people hear it too because it can motivate other people not even just that but it, like it just gives you a touch the audience can touch who you are right because yeah. we don't do that much blogs yeah. we do three interviews but they're 10 second clips so like when you do the podcast i like to express myself a little bit like you are right now right they get a glimpse of who you are uh, regardless if it's negative or positive right yeah. you shouldn't give a fuck but it's cool because like you share your thoughts and I, I don't know like you just said like you can see through that it's yeah. a matter of time well it's also like um uh, like these famous youtubers when like they get exposed for like being a whole different person yeah like, that they are not and on video and it's just like that like people portray themselves on video to be like this certain person yeah just for like these views and stuff yeah and so yeah it's it's, 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 yeah, but it's, it's yeah. Like, to your point right i think that was the coolest part like about when i met mr crown yeah mm -hmm. the coolest part was i i went out of like the back room to supply uh and i was like climbing to manager when i'm the manager and i turned my head i just see this guy looking at like some suits uh and he he turns his head and i'm like mr crown and he looks at me he's like hey what's up man and then, like, the conversation that I had with him for, like, maybe 30 minutes, mm -hmm. right? I was like, man, you're exactly, the, like, the dude on, yeah. on social media. Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah. And then I thought to myself, man, like, how many people do you meet, like, on, live, live these lives on social media? And then you're kind of like, oh, you're not the person that I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like, it falls apart really. Just remember, but, like, anything that, that you build really quick falls apart really fast. Fast. Yeah. You can't keep up. It's a, if you're not authentic when you're on camera... Sooner or later, your fan base is gonna find out it's that gonna, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. Regardless if it's negative, negative or positive, just I feel like there's always a fan base for everything. There's always a market for everything. There's a market for everything. So, so I feel like, like you said for yourself, yeah. yeah. As in, if you're an expert in something, right? Like people wouldn't question it because you you obviously done the work. You've obviously given them like for my job, like mm. in, in very easily summarized. I want to help people look great without thinking about it, right? right. I want to simplify dressing well for the that's like my goal like simplify style that you would right so for every guy that i meet i ask him a lot of questions because i want to like i want to know who you are what yeah. you take what you need this for yeah and i tell them as a joke all the time so it applies like the only at least for me my experience with the gummies i'm like the only person who will tell you not to buy something oh, man i really want like four suits but i'm like but listen bro you're a creative guy right uh -huh. you work in a creative field what do you need four suits for? Well, because I need something to wear every day. I was like, how about this? Let's get you a suit. Uh, let's pair these with the right things. I'm going to build you a system that when you wake up in the morning, even if it's the same jacket, no, no. pair with different X, Y, Z, like uh, multiple ways to wear it, right? It'll make sense for who you are because you've told me who you are. Uh -huh. And all of the time, the guys are like, man, this is great. Like, I now have a system in my head of how to do things. Right. And I thought I was going to meet me with like five different suits and i left here with like a suit and a sport coat whatever uh sure yeah you're still investing in the money but now it makes more sense for your life right right yeah. rather than like i'm looking for it's like guys who walk in like i'm looking for a black suit uh okay let me show you a black suit uh, how many like re retailer right like how many times do you see that it's like right i'm right. looking for a i'm looking for a pair of jeans right mm -hmm. okay here's a jeans yeah for us the i think what makes us different as a company uh -huh. the ra that radically personal approach is like what do you need to do or what do you need a black suit for yeah. well I'm, I'm, it's actually my first suit mm -hmm. and then this and then as an expert your advice comes up like you know actually you don't really need a black suit oh uh, yeah but the steve harvey video said that i need a black yeah. it's like i tell them like like here's why right black suits only really for formal occasions uh -huh. or if you're actually required to wear it for work which some places are yeah. But like the only thing that's supposed to be black suit in your closet, it's a tuxedo. Yeah. How many times are you gonna wear a tuxedo? Yeah. Not a lot. What do you do for work? I'm in finance. So what do you need about two? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, I get your point. So what do I need? Uh huh. Navy suit, charcoal suit, your essentials, right? You pair that with like three shirts, three uh -huh. different ties. You do the math. Like if you had a navy suit, if you had a navy suit, uh -huh. you pair that with three shirts and three ties. How many how many outfits do you have right there? Just with that one navy suit. I told. Yeah. 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 
Why 12? Because if you remove the tiny, those three shirts without yeah. the tiny, three different outfits. You know, I know that because Steve Harvey, I think this is name Steve Harvey. He was yeah. any, all you need is three seats, a cream, a gray, and like a cat. Yeah. You're you know, I watched that and I was like, hmm. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. But but again, different people, different lifestyle. That's why I yeah. tell them, if you go inside suit supply, there's a, what we call the suit with, right? Uh -huh. There's like a billion Navy suits. Uh -huh. So how do you know which one to take out? That's where we come in. It's like, I'm going to ask you a question. Depending on what you give me of who you are, your lifestyle, uh, I can pull one of those out and we're confident that that Navy suit is going to fit your lifestyle. Right. Different, the fabric, the construction, all of those things. That's why you have an expert. Uh -huh. yeah. Or when you do custom made, it's like, I want a custom suit. Oh, you guys do custom made too? We do, we do custom suits so too, but like, guys right. will tell you like, why do you need a custom suit? Is it because it doesn't fit right? Do you've never uh -huh. had a place that fits you properly? Or is it you want to make something that doesn't exist in ready to wear right right mm. and a lot of the time i would say like 95 percent of the guys that i meet are like i've never fit off the rack bro um i'm like cool let me get your size and it's funny because like i size it in ready to wear do you make supplies off that or no we suit supply does regard the mission yet yeah. i i'm sorry to put you up but like yeah, no i i like it too because um at, in your vines because i'm a manager over there and then we work we don't do it upscale like you but it's still kind of pricey we get like these called well bucks. So let's just say um, if we sell something that's 500 bucks, yeah. we get five well bucks. They can be converted to a gift card or Amazon gift, whatever. Or some no cash. Yeah. yeah. So generally a lot of people just try to add more stuff to pile up that rep. But like just based off what you're saying right now, you just like, you, and you get a commission. So you like, this is how you live. Um, this is how you eat. You don't really fuck people over. You just tell them what they need, not what they need. So that's the thing about sales, right? Is like- It also brings back what kind of person makes you, you know, kind of make it would also bring back loyal customers. It does. Uh, yeah. It, it, retention is a big thing in not mm -hmm. just in our business, in every business. Because mm -hmm. it's like I tell them, but like business is about relationships. Come on, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it is if I'm helping these people, listen, I could either sell you like 10 items um, that don't make sense for you and uh, make that commission uh, and never see you again. Right. Or I can give you like a blueprint that like, hey, you just started a job. This is what you need. We, right, we call it the the life the life spin of your customer. Right? Yeah. And what typically happens is it's crazy because like I've actually seen guys that have shopped at me from three years ago when I started uh, that are now like last year they were like man I got the motor at work man we updated your orders now the dudes like getting engaged got uh, married it's like only shops at you because he's like you would help me that one time you gave me solid advice you know, right. you really look out for him mm -hmm. and I think that's really what separates a good. I wouldn't say like salesmen, uh -huh. I, yeah, salesmen from, from everybody else because yeah. there are people, though, though in our environment, look, there's not a lot. There are people out there who's like, yeah, you should pile this up, yeah, yeah. and then they don't really care what happens after that, right? Yeah. For me, like I, I have guys who, like message on Insta, cool message me, hey man, your wedding went, uh, just message it, how how the wedding go? Uh, mm. It's like, dude, people love the suit. I was like, good man, glad to hear. Like, what else you got coming up? Uh, like. Yeah. You build that relationship, and to me, it's like whether it's now or like uh, six months from now, right? Cool. I might see you again in six months, uh -huh. or even better, if I don't see you in six months, you might be sending people my way because they're like, man, Zoo is great, man, you should go work with it. Right. I get guys who come in and are like, man, don't be surprised if my friends start booking appointments with you. So I was like, as long as they tell me they're your friend, man, because I got to thank you for that. And oh, like, yeah, yeah. We laugh about it, but it's, it's true because, right. I mean, like, it, you, you have to build relationships. It ain't. Uh -huh. It's like now, like we're uh, for, for a house or we're getting a roof fix, and it's a guy I met through Suit Supply, Josh. Uh -huh. I told him I'd give you the business. Why? Because me and him have rapport together. Uh -huh. Like I've never seen his work, but because our relationship is like great, uh -huh. I'm gonna give you the business because you're my preferred, like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think, like, being in a soccer team, because you know how you have to be, you have teammates and it has to be a family? Do you think that taught you how to have the, like people skills or like yeah like interacting with people good because you have to have that chemistry I, I think in a sense like yes because you have to it and granted right look being on a on a team isn't always as glamorous because you will have teammates you're kind of not like yeah. there with but you it's you like a family you yeah. deal with them anyway but i think that the biggest thing is just what what sports has taught right it's kind of like just the mindset yeah like it's like it's like they say like the great players you can't we can separate them from each other because that like we're losing at 2-0 yeah right 
and that first, that player is still like, it's okay, guys, it's 2 0, we can still do this. Yeah, but right. then there's the players who are like, it's, it's, nice. it's all on board. Yeah. And I was like, to save them, like, that's why I'm a Man United. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, but like, yeah. I was in that era where, like, the Fergie side, mm. it's like, they, and they're 3 0 down, and for somehow it's 5 3. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How bad? No, but that's what sports has taught me as a guy, like, the value of hard work, because, and accountability, because, like, let's face it, but. There's a lot of athletes, all right, when I used to coach, I used to tell kids, they get mad, they're like, I'm not playing coach, like, what's what's wrong, you know, like, why am I not getting played, you don't like me? Uh, I'm like, well, I, I, I do like him, I want you to succeed, but the thing is, dude, that kid is, like, working 10 times harder than you are, and I know there's training, and I'm giving you the opportunity to, like, push yourself, yeah. right? But if he's playing better than you are, I'm gonna pick him, I'm sorry, but, like, that's just how it goes. This isn't a favoritism thing, right? right? I know... I'm sure there's some coaches, am I going to, who, who have those kind of things, but what that taught me as an athlete was like, if I'm not performing, am I good enough to play it's high fold? Yeah. Because it's like, why should I get to play more than he does if he's outworking me every single time? Mm -hmm. And it applied, like now in life, in a commission jump, right? It's like, if you look at the numbers for the month and you're like, man, I'm only at here. There's people who are like, man, this bullshit, you know, like, it's slow, that's what it is or there's no traffic, or every time somebody walks in, that person runs over and says hi to them. This is, this is crap, I'm not making money. I'm like, you can think of it that way, or you can be like, well, why am I not the one running at that person? I just try to, yeah. Like, why am I not reaching out to all my old clients and saying, hey man, what you got going on? Like, I have all these new, dude, mm -hmm. like, suit supply right now, we're preparing for like fall winter, right? Uh, Which is in September, it's launching yeah. in this September. I know what I have, like, files-wise, I've already briefed like half my client list. I'm like, hey, dude, you got the phone. You're a lawyer, right? The super <laughs> business collection this year, fantastic. Yeah, right. And you're a lawyer. You wear a lot of suits. This is exactly what that's built for, bro. Uh -huh. And I have guys who are like, can you can you send me a logo? Yeah. I'm like, absolutely. Just don't just don't tell them I showed you a few, right? <laughs> yeah. And as soon as that happens, it's like I'm already prepping these guys for when stuff comes out. Right. Yeah. So maybe now I'm not like. I should be worried if I'm in a job, but I'm not really stressed because I know that I'm capable of doing things. Right. And that's what I try, like, uh, I'm our style expert in the store, and that's what I try to help hone with some of the guys. It's like, dude, that's really what that's about. You're the, if you're not succeeding, you're the only person you have to blame. Yeah. Nobody's, like gonna, no, nobody's gonna tell you, like, come on, man, let me give you a few. No, it's like, I will give you the tools Stop. and do what, it, what you will. Yeah. I like the, I, I watch a lot of Gary Vee and he always just like, everyone does this, but never, no one does this. Yeah. You know? or, no one yeah. blames herself. St starting off, did you have a difficult time doing that? Or like, like communicating with people and like having sales? Or were you always good at it? So that's, that's one way to look at it, mm -hmm. right? And I think from a numbers perspective, like in a day, I remember specifically like one Saturday, I was looking at the tail and I think we were making each like, I think like ten, fifteen thousand dollars in in sales that uh, day. One, one like that was like right after COVID, uh -huh. super busy time. And I remember you're looking at we have this thing we call like a, your IP, your items per client, your average sale, the right? Mm -hmm. And I think you, it was really funny. I started the day I was at two grand. I took my lunch, and people were like selling that stuff. I went out. I had a really good client that I prepped to come in. Mm. He brought his dad in. He was like, "My dad, he's a tire new wardrobe, bro." Like, you know, I had three clients that did me, and I think they paid you set like fifteen thousand dollars. Wow! And the next person to me had like fifty people they helped, mm. and they were like, "How the f you you?" <laughs> he joked, right? But he was right. like, "You worked for like a couple of three hours. The rest <laughs> of the time you were folding stuff. Uh, it's like yeah. you didn't want to sell anything." Uh, and I was like, but "Because." For me, I'm invested in my client's life. Right. It might mm -hmm. have to take three hours with the guy to get him sorted out for the entire season. Fine. Yeah. And, you know, if, if he comes in and he's buying a pair of socks, granted, like, a lot of them don't, right? But he's buying a pair of socks and he wants to talk to you for, like, an hour. And you're not, it's not busy. There's nobody in the store. Talk to him. Right, yeah. Hey, man, how's the kids? Ah, you know, the kids, man, thank you for asking like this. Because it's the relationship you're building. Yeah. yeah. Granted, if, like, he was talking to you for an hour, right? And there's like five people waiting. That's a whole different story. Yeah, I know. But I mean, people also like they'll see that and go like, "Hey, man, there's, go ahead, help them. Yeah. That's fun, right?" But like, that's what really what it's about. And I think that's why why I enjoy like this type of environment or the sales job because and it's problem solving. Yeah. Like I was thinking to myself, if I was in a two to apply, if I was doing something else, like, like I don't know, selling doors, 
I know, right? Uh, I'd always ask people, like, so how, how long have you been in the market for a door? Like, mm. what's the problem with your other door? Ah, it's creaking and all that stuff. Right. Well, let's help you figure that out. Yeah. Because you're not selling it. You're helping them figure something out. Yeah. But that's really what I think sales is all about. Yeah. yeah. What are you, are you getting? Oh, no. I was going to say, well, if you didn't do the sous supply, what do you think you would, you would have done? But, you know, I think, like, like I used to say this, I, I think now where I want to be is really, like, focus on just helping. I don't know. I don't know yet, I guess, but I just want to know people. Uh, I think right now it, it would have something to do with finance if I didn't get in suiting uh, because I feel like there's a huge market for people who need help with financial literacy. Okay. Who are getting, like, screwed. And my mom included, like, my mom included, like, the people I've worked with included I, I know people were like two or three years from retirement bro and like hey what do you what's your plan to get in your time well i only have sixty thousand saved up but i'm like what's your plan like, right and move to another country yeah and well i'm like why because he's like i only have sixty thousand. like i didn't know what to to do that yeah he's like yeah. why is that because no and then they always tell you nobody taught me how to do this and i'm just like i read i have sixty thousand because i started investing in my 401 like five years ago and I was like, imagine if you invested. That. I sound like a finance podcast guy now, but like, imagine if you did that when you were like 26, like I am. Even if you just started now, you would have more to retire on than no, sure. if you didn't. Right. And it it just leads you kind of like this whole rabbit hole of finance. And it, like, you can't save your way out of, you can't save your way out of, you know, the, yeah, 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 debt or retirement or inflation, man. So like for you, who taught you? Like I know you said you invested before we started. Like who taught you? Yeah, yep, I'm totally. So where where that started for me was actually my first job here when I was at J Crew. Right, I was getting paid. I think at the time minimum wage was like thirteen dollars an hour. Right, and I was like so excited to be making money, and I was wow. like, okay, thirteen dollars an hour. I'll work thirty hours a week because I'm part time. Right, and these are my paychecks. And then I asked myself. If I do this for like 60 years, right? What'd that look like? So calculator and everything. I was like, damn, I don't going to retire, dude. Yeah. And I was like, how do people retire? Yeah. So, so that's what started it. And then I looked into like, okay, so there's retirement accounts. Mm. And then I understood all of a sudden like compound interest, all of these things. But then it gives you this rabbit hole of, because the more you know, the more you want it. Right? Mm. Like, then it drove me to a point where it's like, how do people like, make like people like making an insane amount of money yeah how rich people like and i i, I told people like uh, at my job at tutsu pipe when you understand how the financial system kind of works you kind of it's hard to hate rich people in a sense yeah you know? because one you understand how they take it, it it's not that they take advantage of it but they know how the system works yeah and, and they use it to their advantage yeah that's because they know how to do it uh -huh. yeah. and you can't get mad either because at some point in time i'm not saying all of them mm. But like a lot of them have put in the work to get to the place where they're at. Yeah. And I think you're going back to the earlier conversation of like people wanting so instant. Mm -hmm. cool. Like I'm not gonna lie, dude. But you see like Iman Gadzi, like for example, right? You'll see him on YouTube, and you're like, damn, this dude has a Patek. Click. At 23, he buys a four million dollar house for his mom. I'm 26, man. Like what am I doing? But I'm like, bro. But his Panthers is different than yours, dude. Yeah. Half the people who started companies, for are in their 40s, 50s, yeah. 35. Yeah, and I think we have an advantage because we know so much. Like in this day and age, there's nothing that you can't get to. Like if you wanted to learn how to cook an egg, go to YouTube. Yeah, search. It's just people have to put their minds into it, right? Like people yeah. just have to start. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people don't do that. You know, they just think about it, which is why nothing gets ex executed, right? Especially when you're young. When you're young, it's scary to take risks. It's a, it's an ounce for else. Yeah. yeah. And it's then when you're it's older, it you is. just want to take all the risks. You just don't have the energy no more, or the time. Even yeah. if you get married, like the rat race. Yeah. Right. Once you open a mortgage. You know, your wife's going to want to have kids. Once you have kids, you have to buy diapers, furniture, you know? Yeah. Um, and nobody's saying that's bad either. Yeah, it's not bad. But I think, it's like, like thing. you said, it's it's been programmed in yes. us. It's yeah. it's really, it's been programmed in us. And I think, like, the unconventional road of, like, how to do things, uh, everybody's going to find the way to do it. But I think, it, like you said, there's a, I can't remember what movie that was, but there's a phrase that he said, right? Like, how much do they pay you to give up on your dreams? It was like one of the quotes from this movie, and I, I thought about that, and I'm like, if I, if what I really wanted was to help people, right? And I was in a job that I did like, uh, I was getting paid super well. I asked myself, like, would you stop doing that job to pursue something, or would you? Mm, but again, there's a lot of factors. It's a, it's a tough yeah. question. Yeah. You're like, 
okay, it's the difference between making like fifty thousand dollars a year, but you're happy, you feel fulfilled, uh, yeah. or you get paid one hundred twenty bucks, but you're basically sitting in a desk and a laptop all day doing or, yeah, God knows miserable. what, right? Three hundred k, but you're miserable. And a lot of people, but there's two cents to that because uh, a lot of people will say, I'd rather be happy. Uh, I'm like, sure, but you know, life comes with a lot of challenges too. Yeah, right. But it's all also about mapping out your you. For me, what's always worked is like. I play this activity with my friends. I say, where do you want to be in 10 years? And how it's like how the Navy SEALs, they said they do it, right? They plan back. Millions. Because what happens is, okay, you want to be a millionaire by 30. Yeah. And how do you plan? What's the step you need to take right before that? Well, I would have at least needed, I don't know, 50 pro rental properties. My portfolio is here. Okay. How, what's before that? I mean, oh, well, in five years time, if I'm 20, mm -hmm. I want to have at least half that many properties. Okay. And before that? Well, at least need one property, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we know where it starts. Yeah. But when they see that, that's like it's... They, it gets scary. Yeah. It gets scary. Yeah. But, but it's a long journey. It's a long journey. Yeah. yeah. But again, like we said, I think we talked about this the other night, but you always tell people who will tell you that life is long, but also like it's it's paradoxical. It the life is also short. Right, sure. You could yeah. be planning for a lot of these things in the future, but you might not even... You might die. Oh, so, yeah. Might not. You might... So, yeah. But I think like what's powerful is all the these successful guys always tell you, but it's really about the journey, right? And I think if you just enjoy like kind of like the process to it, uh, I think, dude, if you were on your way to like to to that ten year mark, like being a millionaire or something, um, whatever the goal is, I think if you were like doing that on a daily basis and you're putting in the work, I think if you if something happened to you tomorrow, you would have died happy. Yeah, I'd be That's like, you know what? I was on my way there. Granted, I never saw it, but I was doing something I really wanted. Yeah, and also, also worth to say, but like, a lot of the side you choose to be happy doesn't necessarily mean you don't get paid the, in the long run. Because, like we said, if you're building the value, it's like I want to start like a. Let's say you wanted to start soccer again, and I want to give these kids who, who have who can't afford it the chance mm -hmm. to succeed, right? Well, screw it, if they can't pay me a lot, I just want to develop them. Like how the European academies do it. What happens when your kid is like 19 and some MLS club was like, we really want that kid. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's gonna be like, I don't know, million dollars to sign the kid. Yeah, that's a long game. But now you're now you, as an academy, you get paid a million dollars to develop one kid. Yeah, it's shifted mindset. But yeah. that's why I think like a lot of the time we're behind. The U.S. is like behind in a lot of things because the mindset's just different. Or yeah. adding a lot of things, we're also behind in a lot of things. So it's like a give and take. It's just bizarre, man. Like how just the way how life is. You know, like I said, I don't know. It's, and you're young too, man. You're 20, I'm, I'm damn near your age. I'm 23, so 26, right? And it, it's, it's the journey, the progress, what you want to do. And that's, it. yeah, like everyone wants to be a millionaire. I say it all the time. Everyone wants to be a millionaire, but like, what are you willing to do for it, right? Yeah. First of all, and it doesn't even mean you're going to be at, keep that in mind. But what are you willing to do for it? I did yeah. heard another day. He said, he only had like six hours of sleep this past weekend. Wait, wait, I, I said, said, are you willing to do that for the next? Yeah. How many more years? Years, yeah. Because you don't even know. I'm just giving you a year, two years. But do you really to, to feel like that for the next two years, knowing that you'll become su successful? He said, yeah, of course, right? Most people don't even know when that's going to happen. That could be 5, 10, 15. Like, are you willing to do that? Yeah. You know? I think it's, the it's, like, it's the journey and just keeping your eyes on the prize, man. Like, yeah. I get a lot. I love my job, but there's really going to be days in anything you do where you're like, this is terrible. Yeah. I hate this. But yeah. then you remember, like, you know what? I actually remember why I'm doing this. Uh, it doesn't make it so bad when you see the big picture. Uh, but yeah. I feel like, like we said, people are so addicted. These dopamine hits of, like, everything has to be fast. I want to yeah. get promoted. I want to do this. Yeah. Do that. And you, you think that, like, because we compare ourselves to other people on social media. Not even social media anymore. Like, I'll say, man, as a Filipino, like, you go to church and your, your mom's talking. And, and my mom, okay. for one, my mom doesn't do that, right? But I go to church and, like, you see all these, my kid, you know, like, he's right. a doctor now. He's like this. <laughs> oh like, God. even <laughs> even that, like, that was the old version of a social media. Yeah. Right? And it's like, you're so used to being compared to other people. You want success because you want to just be better than the other guy. Yeah. You want to show up. When, like, yeah. what it really is, is just be better than you, man. Like, just be better yeah. than you. That's all you can. It's, it's like your only competition is yourself. Like, uh, yeah. That's what, yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that's really what that is. Yeah. You shouldn't count out the competition with other people because it keeps yeah. you in check. Yeah. That's why you need like friends, you need like brothers around you. Mm. Because you have people who will keep you in check and say, like, hey man, you're falling off your goal a little bit, bro. Like, yeah. what's up? What's up with that? But that's also when you need to balance that out and realize like no matter what happens, right? 
I'm happy with myself and I'm the only com competition I need. Yeah. If my brother is like succeeding, I'm gonna support him. I feel like, hey, mate, congratulations, you video goal. And I'm sure you will do the same with you, Ian. Yeah. And if you're in a friend group but it's like that, you don't want to switch friends. I don't mean, I'm sad. Right? Great. I think that's really what it is. Is like, dude, you set a goal in life and you chase it. Just keep your eyes on the prize and be consistent. You know, yeah. and not every day is gonna be great. Like, yeah. So, like, and this is the time in my job where I'm like not making the most money in, in sales, but I also understand that like I'm setting something up for a bigger purpose, right? And because I know that, I'm not upset. I'm not telling, but the, you're doing well because I'm, I'm like teaching us these things. Go for it. We're part of the same team. Your win is my win. You know, right? And I think like that's really that's that's the problem. Like no, a lot of people aren't like that anymore. But they say they are, but yeah. And I like that too because you know, and that's why how this podcast came about. Uh, dude, it's hard, right? Like you have to battle your own self. Yeah. And there's so much self doubts. You know. Um, and that, I don't know, like the street interviews helped me a lot, bro. Like even before I worked at Vineyard, I thought I was gonna do six months at Vineyard. Yeah. I, th I thought I had no people skill. I couldn't talk. I couldn't speak. Um, I during COVID, I got developed new habits. I read a book. I started running outside. I hate being shirtless because I thought I was fat. I lost weight. Changed my habits. It's all within. Your, it's like if you go to the gym, you think everyone's looking at, you. everyone's judging you. I, I, you know, that's why it's, when I run outside, I feel like everyone's looking at me. But I'm just like I tell myself, dude. They wish that they were in your position because they're right now going to go to Starbucks and get that sugary drink. <laughs> and they're right now working out because you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. yeah. I try to tell myself. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, no, dude, I, I, I don't know. It's true it's that you're competition yourself. <laughs> it is. And it, it, it's a funny thing, man, because I think for the longest time for myself too, I, I'm just being honest with myself at some point, but I used to want to do certain things and build value. Same like my friend, that's why... I'm a few years older than he is, yeah. so I'm telling him that. But I used to do things because I wanted people. I wanted the. I wanted the status too. Yeah. yeah. And when I stopped doing that and focus on like how can I like make myself better, capable of helping other people or right. like doing certain things that will actually benefit them. Uh, that's when just it naturally, naturally just happens. You can't. You can't fake the value you bring to other people. Yeah. Right. Because like. Just like from a business perspective, it's like somebody wrote a book will be, oh, he's the best ever. And then they come to the store and that you're like, man, that was the worst guy to work with. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, but what actually happens is, you know, whether there's a Google review or not, people will naturally gravitate to people who bring value to their lives. Yeah. No shit. And I think that's what people should focus on is like, you want to be a doctor? Focus on wanting to help other people. Don't become a doctor just because you want the high salary. Yeah. You're getting paid a good salary because people's lives are literally in your hands. Yeah. Right? You want to be, I don't know, an athlete? Uh, great. Like, focus on helping the team. Like, how many times did you hear a coach say that, like, you were valuable to our team in more ways than just, like, scoring goals mm -hmm. or shooting baskets or something? Why? Because you're the, you're the glue that holds these. You naturally, everybody has something that naturally brings value to the world, right? Right. Yeah. And if you're not trying to find that and you're just focused on, like, I just want to be important. It's, it's not gonna happen, dude. Yeah. You'll be important for five seconds, and then it's like, the next time somebody's has more clout than you are, you disappear. So you're and, that's, and that's perfect too, because like, if you go for that, I'm saying it just off the bat, you're not fulfilled. You're not. You're not. You just won't be fulfilled because you yeah. want more, and, you, and want more. you just can't obtain it no more. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I just had to say that too, but that's, yeah. No, and I, I think like, that. that's that's true, and I think like that's, it speaks, I'm going to say trade, and, I think about like next steps in my, like yeah. getting married, having yeah. kids, all that stuff. But like I tell them, like my goal isn't to have that happen in a snap. We're planning or we're mapping out our lives and saying, okay, we want kids. When are we gonna? And I think that's that's important. Having a support system too, yeah, more than just a wife. You like your brothers, your family. That's why these things are important. I think a lot of the time now, people having talked to like a lot of people, they always feel like they're alone doing certain things. Yeah, and I think that's. It's really sad because there's a lot of people out there who care about you but i think that's what needs to get normalized too for brother to brother from like all of these is just telling people you're you're there you care about them you're there to support them and lifting people up i think that's very important yeah because i think that's what's missing now is like oh man did you see his new car bro like i could have had that car too it's like who cares dude yeah. be happy that he's doing well yeah. that's interesting because is somebody might like the other night right we were outside harbor you see the car, somebody Maybe. probably takes a photo, right? Yeah. It's a hypothetical situation. Yeah. Take a photo, man, you whip, bro. 
some dudes posing like that's his car, his friends, and ah oh, man, dude, he's super successful now like this. But the reality is the guy probably doesn't own that car or whatever the situation. We never yeah. know what people are going through. Yeah. yeah. Just because life looks good doesn't mean it is. Yeah, that's true. Right? But again, there's also a sense of maturity that comes with the fact that like you're also unbothered to yeah. things. Like for my job, I post stuff on social media for in in, in tandem with the government. Mm -hmm. We want to. I love posting suit supply stuff because I think we bring value to the market. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's why I do it. But I also tell people like, you know, I, I try to keep it real. I'm not gonna post myself being happy and then be sad. It's I, I tell I tell my private group of friends too like man I was shit rough man like <laughs> these things happen but they know I keep it real they know that it's not always sunshine and rainbows no. and that's what gets people to open up and talk about their problems too but if we're in a culture where it's just like everything's great bro I'm great and your friend is now forced to to feel that way too like, yes, like man I, yeah. I don't want to tell you life's bad because you you seem all happy. Yeah, but if you're willing to open that door for them, people will also share to you and yeah, express sure. because it's it's that's what being genuine is about, right? Yeah. Like, there's a time and place to be. You know what? I'm not gonna show emotion right now because I'm I'm focused on this this test. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be showing people that I can be broken like that. There's moments where you need to be like strong, for not just for yourself but for other people. And there's moments too where you have to be. I'm gonna say vulnerable, but you have to show kindness, mm -hmm. right? It's like yes, you're. It's like the quote they were saying. It's like you're, you're, you're supposed to be kind, not nice. Like I tell them, you know. I, that's yeah. shifted my mind. Yeah. It's like I, I would say I'm trying to be a kind person. Yeah. But also, I don't think I'm a nice guy per se because tell me, my friends think I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, but I show them kindness when necessary, but I'm an right. asshole because I'm telling them like, bro, what are you doing? It's you're 23. Like I'm giving you all this knowledge and you're still sitting on your ass like yeah, doing yeah. nothing. What are you doing? Like, yeah. I, I think. That's as a big brother, at least. Yeah, that I see myself. That's how it should be. Yeah, yeah. It's like, bro. It's like, uh, these podcasts are like, you, you want to be in a million subs, bro? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit you up in, in like half a year and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come yeah. on, we gotta get yeah. to a billion yeah. subs. Like, yeah, that's that's. But then again, like, goes back to your question, what would I be doing outside of suits? But that's kind of where I want to be. I like that. Like, I ask myself, like, yeah. I want to be somebody people like. Maybe call it, say, man, I need you to hold me accountable. Great. What are you, what are you, yeah. what are you, what are you, man, what are you going to like, yeah. I, I don't want to be a life uh, coach or anything like that, but in a, I want to be in a place where I can actually make an impact on people's lives. So I'm your mentor. Right? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Right? I want to like impact people's lives in a way that like it really shifts their life to do better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. You want to make a speaker of some sense, you know, well, to some extent. I know. I thought I was telling you. Yeah, I don't know. know. Fajr was telling me he wants to do a TED Talk. I want to. That's my dream goal. Well, I want to do a TED Talk. To, the legend oh. just walked in. Is <laughs> anyone making an appearance yeah. right now? No, but it really. Hey, do you want to make an appearance right now? He wants to sit on the right. I need to do the right face. The camera can't get to. Don't be camera shy. Can't see Haney, but Haney just came in through right now. <laughs> you ain't there being a legend like that. Let's go. I don't know about that, but and that, he's the legend right there. <laughs> all, all he has everybody looking fly and <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, he's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna know. Know. So one of my Instagram posts like was just funny because I got a lot of people like ask me about it. Mm. I was like telling them like I'm always watching you guys. Uh, mm. if if you leave like a stitch on the back of your jacket, I'm gonna know about it. I'm gonna find you <laughs> I'm a <credit. laughs> If I see you wearing those crocs uh, on your days off <laughs> so I always get this too. What do you think about Burks and Socks? You know, I, I have Stop. no Burke Burks and Socks. Yeah, absolutely not. Bro. True. <laughs> I just think I did. Please cut it out. Right, what do you please cut it out, Rod? I understand the logic, <laughs> right? I understand the logic because like socks are man comfy and so are birds. But yeah, please stop. Because I wear white socks sometimes or black socks with Burks. I'll put you guys on. Somebody like Iman said this on his channel but like his essentials like Laura Piana shoes or whatever I have these from Suit Supply by the way no. like oh, I love the 199 or something like mad comfortable it doesn't cost that much to look great oh, I'm just gonna tell you guys that but if you had the choice of what looks great and what's comfy why don't you have something that does both right yeah, like right. we have all these options and still I see people wearing stuff that I'm like bro why yeah just why right and I think like that this is a good segue for our next point, but like mm. if it, guys always tell me, right, they don't really care about how we dress. So I I was making this like presentation that I wanted to do that's like a blueprint, uh -huh. right? To explain why it's important you dress well. Mm. When you go into a the grocery store, you have two outlets, right? Mm, yeah. One looks like shit and the other one is like looks nice and juicy. Which one do you think? 
The juice bill. Just yeah. the juicy one. Yeah. Why? Because you looked at it and you were like, that's it's probably not safe to learn at that one. Yeah. yeah. And if you think that that doesn't apply to everything in your life, that's true. That's true. No, those yeah. are facts. Well, those which are... is why they always say, um, that's like, if you look good and feel good, and hundred percent. There's like, it was something else, but yeah, it's like it's a, it's just unavoidable, bro. It's yeah. like, I think the visual aspect of how people perceive things is important because it gets you through the door. Yeah, but that's where substance comes in too. Because you know, if you can't back up how you look, like if you dressed like mad successful, you know, three piece and everything to an interview, right? Mm-hmm. And then the moment they're like, okay, probably a good candidate. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then the moment you open your mouth, it's like. Well, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but that's why it goes in tandem. But don't take for granted that you still need to get through that door. Yeah. Yes. Because a lot of the time, like, guys, like, kind of like, it's fine, I'll get the job because I'm smart. People won't even look at you because they don't know that. Well, sure. Keep in mind, like, life is, like, we always say, right? everything in life is sales. You're selling yourself to some degree. Right. And how do you, like you said, don't be the rotten apple. Yeah. yeah. Be the shiny red one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, which is which is why I also like I noticed that in mostly all sellers shops they have like a certain attire you have to wear, because and I'm guessing it's because of that like you want to look presentable so that people look appealing and so like, yeah. people are like oh I'm interested in talking to this guy because he looks to it and like you know but yeah no but I think what it is too the whole suit and tie I think it shows a degree of professionalism right yeah. and a sense of habit for somebody too because for one of the things I tell them but. It's it's so weird being in menswear because even the the tie knot that you tie tells mm-hmm. me a lot about you. Mm. It's weird to say, right? Yeah. But it's like whether you tie the tie a full Windsor knot, for example, that like really thick tie yeah. knot, or like a foreign hand which is a little bit more relaxed, it tells me a lot about somebody. The guy who ties one knot is like okay, he's probably like more strict, more like mm-hmm. in the box kind of person. Uh-huh. The other ones, well, he knows he's in the know a little bit. Like he kind of. Or if a guy just like put a tie on just to have a tie on, tells you a lot about yeah. somebody. Right. It's like somebody, the most important advice I was given back then kind of applies to a lot of things, but it's like um, the, your shoes are the first thing people notice about you. Yeah. And it tells them a lot about who you are. It's like when you're riding the, if you're riding, for example, the the uh, the red line, right? Hmm. And you wear like runners, but then you're wearing like a full suit. For me, I look at that back when I was still in college. I when commuting, I look at that, I'm like, the guy wants to be comfortable, mm. right? Because he's, he's probably in 95, like, you assume all these things. Yeah. It's probably not true, or maybe, mm. I don't know. Yeah. But you're like, the guy wants to be comfortable, he, want, he just wants to get to work, he probably changes his shoes inside the... And then context clues, uh, his suit doesn't fit as well, he's a little bit older, he doesn't take it. It leads into a lot of things. You don't know that about the guy, but you're, you're thinking that based on how he looks, Yeah. right? And the funniest form for me was when I used to work at Indochino. I was a full-time student, too. Right. And I would come to class in the suit because I needed to get to work afterwards. Uh. So some guy, like, asked me on the train, like, what do you do for work? And I'm like, I'm, I work in menswear. He was like, I, I knew it. You look like <laughs> you work in menswear. I was like, why is that? He was like, because you look super stylish, man. I don't like. And I'm like, well, yeah, you didn't have to meet me to figure that out. Yeah. Kind of. But context. Based of your appearance. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I tell the guys, that's why, like, the visual cues are also important. Granted, like, don't, they keep telling you, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh-huh. I agree. Yeah. But you don't pick a book that looks boring either. Uh, so, yeah. Right? That's, yeah. I think that's, that's the most important lesson there. It's like, yeah. you, you don't judge a book by its cover, but you don't pick the most boring looking book either. Yeah. yeah. That's why, like, in marketing, right, there's people who are paid to make a book look pretty. Yeah. Like thumbnails. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's like no, yeah, it's like on this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch a video that's just black. I think yeah. Mr. Beast has spent like 100k on a oh, thumbnail. Yeah, it's, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. it's crazy. That's crazy money. <laughs> yeah. But that's what it takes, like you said. But I bet it was worth it too. Well, that video might be good, but like you just said, if it doesn't look if it doesn't look appealing, you should not click on it, right? That's the visual appeal. That's yeah. why I think like all the social media people, yeah. you see the themes that these people probably either really good at editing or they pay people to do it because you want a photo that captures kind of the message you're trying to send. Yep. Yeah. Like for a suit supplier, right? Like we want a photo that like grabs the attention, but also people look at it like, man, like nice, like here. And then the subtleties are the details. Yep. If I just pulled up in a boring photo on Instagram, screw the likes, man. But people probably like, hey. No. Yeah. Versus like, you know, they look at the photo like that's interesting. And then they read the caption, their substance, and then they, they see the product tanks. 
They're like, man, that was a really good post, dude. Like, uh, it, it's all about visual appeal. That's so. true, man. Um, I'm only going to cut it short. I only need to get short just because of the camera and your camera two gigabytes. But so, where can they find you on? On Instagram, for the most part. That's the only platform I'm at. Okay. Um, at Zonos. It has my links to Suit Supply. You can DM me whenever you want. Just not weird things, please. Just, uh, but yeah, man. That's that's pretty much where I'm at. So, Z 